morning, y'all, and welcome to Barbara Ann. I'm your host, Barbara Ann. Today we'll be talking about the communist threat from the world's Cold War. We have a few guests backstage with us today to analyze the problems of the past. Is it just me, or is there a draft coming in? <laughs> Anyways, our first guest today is Harry S. Truman, President of the United States of America. Let's give him a warm, hearty welcome, everyone. <laughs> welcome, President of the United States of America. Thank you for joining us today. I'm just honored to be here today to talk about one of my past projects. And we're excited to hear about it. So, what do y'all call this project of yours? I call it the Truman Doctrine, and it was put into effective practice on March 12, 1947. Woo! And what did the Truman Doctrine involve? Well, during the Cold War, we were <laughs> very concerned about our dear friends in Greece and Turkey, who were struggling against the imminent threat of the USSR. There were all sorts of free people living there who were being forced to submit to the armed minorities. The threat was a danger to international peace and the national security of the United States of America. And how did the Truman Doctrine plan to help these poor, innocent people? The United States of America planned financially and military to support them to prevent these countries from falling to the atrocities of the communist regime. Well, that sounds like an excellent plan. But did this work? Yes. It ended the communist threat, and both countries are working towards joining NATO. Those of you wondering what NATO is, we'll be explaining that later on in the show. Let's give the president a big round of applause. Thank you, Truman. Woo! Woo! Let's welcome our next guest speaker today. The Secretary of State, George Marshall. Woo! Welcome, Mr. Secretary. What can you tell us of the plan to prevent spreading communist threat in Eastern Europe? Well, Barbara Ann, I'm honored to be sitting here talking about this topic that is so dear to my heart. In Eastern Europe, there is much financial trouble as a result of the war, and we need to be there for our struggling allies. And what did y'all have planned? Well, in April of 1948, we hoped to give financial support to the countries in Eastern Europe to help them rebuild their economy. And what of the rumors that you were planning to aid Germany as well? There was really no other way to get these countries back on their feet. Germany's industrial capacity would, not, would aid not only them, but the surrounding countries as well. And what was the purpose of the Marshall Plan? With the devastating spread of communism, helping to make financially strong countries presented a threat to the Soviet forces and stopped the spread of communism in Eastern Europe. Has the plan turned out as y'all hoped? Yes, it was a great success. Europe was back on her feet and the transport system was renewed, industry was modernized, and there was much trade in between the European countries. Sounds like a great plan. Thank you for joining us today, Marshall. Secretary Marshall, everyone. Woohoo! Our next guest comes all the way from Britain and Canada. Does anyone know where Canada is? Canada? Didn't we bomb them? Uh, no. Anyways, please welcome Louis Saint Laurent from Canada and Colette Athlete from Britain as well. And, once again, the President of the United States of America, Harry Truman. Woo! Now we're going to discuss the organization known as NATO. Laurent, can you explain to us what NATO stands for? Well, it stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And what's its purpose? It's mostly to scare the Soviets away from attacking Western Europe, our dearest allies. Prime Minister, at least, who is all part of this organization, and what does it involve? Well, it's a coalition of the United States, Canada, and Britain, and 13 other countries who are all working against the communist regime. Each member country, if another member is attacked, feels it to be an attack on itself, and will take action against the assembly. And how effective has this organization been, Mr. President? 
Well, it was very effective at restoring stability to Western Europe. However, since the Soviet Union was split up into a number of smaller states, there was no common goal for this alliance. There is no common enemy, so to speak. Well, thank you again to our studio audience and guest speakers for enlightening us on these topics. Tomorrow, our guest will be Albert Einstein, who finally perfected his time travel machine.